macro. I'm from mom and castle. Got it like brown like gravel. Coming back around like lasso. Macro, macro. Like a vision board, I see with clarity. I hustle like my name was Gary V. Sabas, I've been telling you. Accounts was talking about equity. I'm Triple H giving a pedigree. The mean and I'm special, my specialty. I'm putting the work till I'm dirty in the earth. I'm moving furniture to heaven. Hello, man. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good to meet Real you. Real pleasure, how are Thanks. things? Well, I appreciate your time, and okay, so kind of forced you into this one. Hey, I've got a quick fitness thing for you. Um, Go ahead. Doesn't look anything like me. Here's the premise, I'll tell it, it's, it's, it's called Switch is the name of the class. 10 minutes yoga at the beginning, 10 minutes stretch at the end, 40 minutes in between. In 40 minutes, you do 20 different exercises. Each one for two minutes, and then he yells, "Switch!" Uh, you mentioned it, you know. Yeah. He's uh, he's awesome. He's been coming to the classes and bringing all these crazy people with him. So. <laughs> you why don't you guys take over since I'm logistically uh, incapable and work with Andy? And maybe in two or three weeks we'll go because I know I have a lot of travel coming up. We'll get a tie, yeah. yeah, get Ty, Alex. Like, <laughs> like I said, get everybody who's been talking shit. Let's see where everybody's at. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. So, so you've always been into fitness, and yeah. you always try to come up with I concepts. Special Forces military. Uh, I went to college, um, I was a lieutenant, I, I finished the military as a lieutenant, I rewrote the induction program for new recruits coming in. And then I went to college with a sports admin degree, moved to LA, I worked in the industry there, you know, I trained all the, the new, the, I'm sure you've all seen Jurassic Park, I trained all the dinosaur guys for the suits they were like. Oh, that's cool. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna run another thing. I'm looking nice forward to, to seeing you. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Yeah, I look forward yeah. to it. Nice awesome. to see you. Nice to see you too. <laughs> Pleasure. Hi. Oh, I'm the How are you? Thank you for doing this. Yeah. Thank you. Robert, how are you? Okay, thanks. For you, mm -hmm. um, and you will have full approval on anything before we go live. Approved. Okay. We're, we're going live right now, though. Done. Yeah, exactly. oh, I live on the record. I'm Gary Vaynerchuk, the CEO of VaynerMedia. There was no concern about the fact that a lot of people do want to work and play at the same time. Everybody talks about the work-life balance of millennials. Millennials are working harder than we did. Our world ended at 6 p.m. We went home. Millennials are working at 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m. And having all of the other luxuries that are gonna surround this entire process is a very big deal to me. The idea that an employee that's hustling, a millennial who works, can go at 7.30 to one of the best restaurateurs in the world and sit there and work is a very important environment. When you look at the Facebooks and the Googles of the world, the way they really create their campuses are really intended to maximize results. For me, VaynerMedia is not of the size of Facebook and Google. Neither is SAP and Boston Consulting and L'Oreal and Coach and Time Warner. I mean, we're talking about the biggest companies in the world that have these campuses. Well, for me, Hudson Yards becomes that campus. We don't own all of it. It's not all of ours, but in the collective, I now can check off all the boxes that allows me to be competitive to get the best talent in the world. And to me, when I think about that, that's the punchline. When uh, anybody watching right now, that's the punchline. If you're a CFO, CEO, board member, decision maker, that's the punchline. Who do you think you're competing with? How are you gonna win? It's a talent game. Awesome. Appreciate Such it. a pleasure. Thanks so much. It's great, it's great to see you. It's great to see you. Thank you for everything. My name is Andy Cranach. I'm brand director for the man Gary Vee. I've worked for Gary for over three years now. I woke up one morning, I saw Gary tweet, what can I do for you? And I clicked on the tweet and saw people responding and someone said, I'm hungry. And Gary had said, give me your phone number, I'm gonna send you a cheeseburger. Like 10 minutes later, this guy tweeted back a photo that a cheeseburger had arrived at his house. I was like, damn, this guy Gary is like really doing these things. So I immediately just tweeted back at him a chance to work for free. Um, he responded right back, details, question mark. And I responded, I'm just looking for an opportunity to prove myself 
and I'm willing to do it for free. So we, and then she could also do it going forward, because how many answers do we have there? So we're basically on like episode 150, so we basically have 100 more episodes, five questions each, so it's like 500 videos. And just not getting as much output as I want in everything. So I want to I want to make sure I talk to both of you about what the current plan is and what some of the tweaks that I had, and now we'll go through it. One night, uh, I was laying in bed at midnight. I see an email come in. It says from Gary Vaynerchuk. It said. Where can you live? How little are you willing to work for? I responded, I can live in New York City, and I said I could work for free. He CC Nate, who was his assistant at the time, and said, Nate, I like this kid. Maybe he interns for the book. I interned for Gary for five months, so I joined his team full time about two years ago, and then I've now since become his brand director um, for about a year and a half, two years, and it's quite the, the ride. But so for like the French thing, if we can get 10, 15 videos in French, the, having the BSUs is how- Hold on, Andy. Sid, I know you're doing all the international stuff. We're captioning. What language are we missing? Arabic. So I can, I can tag you. Arabic translators. The punchline is my videos translated in Arabic. Who wants that internship? All right, what's your, uh, what's your Instagram? Uh, alternate theory. What? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Sid just sits fired. Next person. Next. What is it? Okay, what is it? He's trying to decide if he wanted to plug his mouth. Yeah, alternate theory. Alternate theory. That's, that's, that's your personal? I, no, that's that's the one that I use. With For business? Anyone I talk to. All <laughs> the other one's just so, like. This one? Yes, that's me. All right. We have a running joke that uh, D Rock does everything on his team. And D Rock's amazing. And he's. Very, very skilled, and we love him very much. But there's a lot more to the man that's Gary Vee that's helping him run his day to day than just David Rock, um, such as Tyler Babin, who edits most of the daily Vs that you've been seeing. Um, Tyler Smith, who handles all his meetings, his emails, his inbox, um, and also he has a business development guy, Alex De Simone. He has a designer. Um, he has myself, he has Elliot who helps with Instagram. He has a lot of amazing players and when you have nine people trying to work on one brand and that one brand is a person, how can we coalesce and come together and support the initiatives that Gary wants? So I think we wanted to grab you, um, I think it stems from a little bit of what we talked about last week over email, yep. but I think the larger question is that the three of us kind of end up brainstorming and come up with ideas a lot about internal communication slash culture. And the, the question was, where and how much do you want to be involved in things that we create? And then I think it really got heightened because of what we talked about last week. And a lot, that's just a lot of what's going on Makes in sense. right now. So and The I, most. Yeah. Because I think that's the thing that's most probably populated to all our minds is which is, I just don't think I'm as aligned with what is the obvious way to do this and I think that we should all get aligned. I think it's a DNA thing for anybody, you know, anybody that, you know, I think everything has rewards and everything has pros and cons to every situation. I think this is a very imperative g game of like self-awareness and understanding, you know, your, your appetite for um, feedback and your own self-awareness and empathy of, is completely maps to the upside of how much you can put yourself out there. Uh, so what really just happened is I tried like three different times to say what the most important thing I've learned from Gary is. It's like speed, it's work ethic. Gary really does work 15, 18 hours a day, which is insane. Um, and he does trump speed over everything else, just fast as possible. The world is moving and we're trying to keep up with it. But really it's empathy. Gary's intuition and the way he understands people and can relate to them um, is why he's so successful. Um, I'm a vlogger and I mean, I don't have a D-Rock. I am my own D-Rock. You don't have this? <laughs> Hi, D-Rock. Hi. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you, I kind of have like multiple revenue streams, which I think is the, the way to go. Two years ago only, I was working a regular nine to five job and then uh, I was working on my side hustle, which is my blog and a few other things. And now I'm a digital nomad, kind of uh, doing my own thing and traveling and that. Yep. Um, I think I do a decent 
decent job at balancing it all out, but uh, how do I make sure that I'm giving the same amount of love to all my different little projects and ventures? By not crippling yourself and thinking that you need to give the same amount of love at all times always, people are too worried about the micro and they think like every, if you have four projects you have to give them all 25% every single day. The reality is I was just sitting here right now with my team, something's, you know, right now Wine Library is getting zero love, right? Right, you know, you know, sometimes my personal brand is getting love, sometimes VaynerMedia is getting love. I think it's, it's, you need to be careful on not trying to be balanced at all times. You just need to be balanced in the macro or you need to map to the ambition that you have for it. So, you know, if four different projects, if you gave them a percentage of value to you or upside to you or how much you like them or how big you think they can be, you need to map your energy that way. So if you think this one thing, the vlogging is 80% of your upside, well you need to be mapping 80% of your energy and the others might be five, five, and 10. He finishes my sentences before I'm done speaking. And he does it, you can deploy empathy in every way, whether it's trying to help your coworker, trying to understand where they're coming from, or trying to make a million dollars on a business pitch. If you can put yourself in that other person's shoes. The reason I can put myself out there so much is I'm so in a great spot on those pillars and that's a, the ultimate blessing in life and I'm very empathetic that most people don't come with that level of balance of ego and humility and I think that's what it takes. However balanced you are with ego and humility will play out itself in the public eye. And so I think that's why I've been able to navigate because I think I'm the best and I think I mean nothing and I'm just empathetic to people's feedback. I'm also self-aware. like. I curse, I'm quite confident in the shit I talk about, which will turn people off, especially if they have no context. I don't expect them to have context. People always come up to me and say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know who you were. I was like, well, I don't think, 99.9% of the world doesn't know who I am. So I think, um, I think the answer to that question, I think much to why, I, I have a good feel, feel of Gaga and like know her backstory and people around her, like she's in a good spot. She can handle that pretty well because she's internal. And I think if you have your self-worth wrapped up in others' opinions, it's a very difficult game to play. Or you play it to the level of where your appetite goes. It's a, too many people cripple themselves on finding that balance and they're doing yeah. it in a micro instead of a macro. Yeah, I was kind of trying to think of them as like my kids and give them the same amount of love, but maybe not. <laughs> no, nobody ever gives their kids the same amount of love in a micro. It's just not the way it <laughs> happens. And even in a macro, it's probably inconceivable and so, you know, sometimes you have to worry about the kid that's got an issue or sometimes you have to worry about the kid that's excelling and so that's just the way it works and the middle kid never gets any love, I mean the whole thing. I go through moments where it's better and it's worse and it's good, like again, I just think everybody's overthinking the day to day. You need to think yeah. of this in years terms instead of days terms.